see that? See that? What is that? Jesus on skateboard? What is that? You see all kind of things down here in Austin. People punch in the air. We're at Lady Bird Bridge, by the way. What was that? Get it. Looked like Jesus on a skateboard to me. He walks on water. He could be able to get in Jesus surf. Anyway, we're uh, hanging out at Lady Bird Bridge in Austin, Texas. What was that? You think? It doesn't matter. We'll leave it alone. Thanks for watching the Maurice Brown Show. Hey, you guys. I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication. And you guys should definitely make sure you're catching the Maurice Brown Show on Roku TV. Welcome to the Maurice Brown Show, and absolutely, Jesus could surf with no problem. There's no question about that. Hey, I'm Maurice Brown. Great having you guys uh, stop by and visit today. We've got a great guest on the show of the Maurice Brown Show today who has won four, get that, four consecutive ISKA World Championships in a row on ESPN. Take that, three-peat. And also... <laughs> You can see him in the, the film Plane with Gerard Butler, which is going to be uh, released on the streaming platform very soon. He's also the fight choreographer for films like Blade with Wesley Snipes and Lethal Weapon 4 with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. And I could go on and on and on with this guy. He's an absolutely tremendous stuntman and fight choreographer. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, please welcome James Singh Lee. What's up, James? How are you? Hey, Maurice. Great to see you online. Great to hear your voice. It's been way too long, my friend. It has been way too long. The last time we spoke was at the International Christian Film Festival last year in Orlando, Florida. And, and by gosh, uh, you're going to be one of the speakers this year at the 11th. Get that, ladies and gentlemen, the 11th consecutive festival for the International Christian Film Festival, and uh, Mr. Lee will definitely be there. Uh, and you're going to be talking about knife fighting. I mean, you're you're a weapons expert. Now we're going to be talking about knives, which you know I can tell you right now, a lot of people don't understand how deadly a person can be with a knife. You talk about guns. I mean, if you know what you're doing with a knife, you can cause a lot of problems. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, we're excited to be a part of the International Christian Film Festival again. Uh, an amazing event. Uh, I've known Marty, uh, Marty and the team for many years. Uh, I've been talking about uh, weapons, especially firearms, over the years, and then of course fight choreography itself. But this year we're going to do knife fighting, so we're super excited to share that. I was talking about your four consecutive world championships. You know, hey, three Pete, take that. Uh, <laughs> and, and which, on ESPN. And, I mean, and, you know, you have a, a, a school where you train uh, young fighters uh, not only to be great at what they do in self-defense and martial arts, but how to be great people, which is more important than anything. And uh, I know that, you know, your your grandmother has a little bit to do with the beginnings of your self-defense program, Fortress Hill. Uh, tell us how that relates to your grandmother, James. Yeah, I love that because um, it's a very important part of the uh, Lee family history as well as uh, my personal relationship with Christ. Um, Fortress Hill is uh, in Hong Kong, China. Now, when I say Fortress Hill, I'm referring to Hong Kong British timeline, not after 1997, uh, now back to communist China. A little right. his history lesson there, right? Yes. Um, so Fortress Hill is... Uh, the Chinese kanji characters, traditional, are loosely translated as uh, Pao Toi San. Pao Toi San. And Pao Toi San is as in like powder, right? Powder. Pao as in is, is cannon in Cantonese Chinese. Okay. Toy is platform. And when a cannon on a platform is together in the kanji characters, that's fortress. And so hey, San Mike. is hill. So fortress hill. Absolutely. Michael, actor Michael Patterson uh, saying hello. I'm sure you're familiar with Mike Patterson. Michael, what's up? 
who's a great fighter, uh, by the way. And have you and Mike ever worked together uh, on any level? Not yet. And I look forward to that day when we get to work together. And I, I, I can't wait to see more action film in the faith-based genre. You know, Absolutely. there's room for it. I think last year you and I talked about uh, one film called Night Guard, uh, which was a 30-minute short. And I, I think it was Peter Wesselman who was the uh, actor in that. And it never, I don't think it ever developed into anything. But that's something I'd love to see the faith-based world dive into. There's plenty of room for it. Absolutely. I mean, especially when we think of faith-based films like um, faith-based communities have done a really great job, especially in documentaries, inspirational films, family films. Um, but when we really think about it, like who's our audience? Like, how are we going to engage in culture for Christ? And I think action films are going to be part of that, uh, method of delivery of the gospel, uh, because we're really going to be able to meet people where they're at. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and as, as I say that James, you, you have an interesting story, uh, you were a tremendous young fighter, and I didn't even begin to t touch the surface of what you've accomplished in the world of martial arts and, and, and self-defense. And you were really, really good at it when you were young. And, and all of a sudden, you kind of realized, hey, man, there's got to be more to life than just, you know, making a lot of money and partying. I mean, there's got to be more to life than this. And and you you'd found out there was eternally more <laughs> to life than this. Tell us about your transition, James, from being a world-class champion fighter without Christ to becoming one with Christ? Oh, great question. So I was very blessed. Uh, my family, uh, in, you know, had martial arts in our family history, uh, very, uh, you know, a family that was following God. And so, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I read the Bible, grew up in youth group, but uh, those college days came and, you know, didn't have a firm foundation, wasn't in mentoring and discipleship relationship, not really connected to the church. You know, off I went into, you know, martial art competition, making action films. Uh, and what happened for me is, um, you know, a lot of success, uh, both in entertainment as well as in the fight circle. And uh, one, day, one day I came home from a movie premiere and I'm like, man, I got everything, but I'm a long yep. ways away from God. I'm like, Lord, yep. change my life. And one week later, man. I brushed my hair, arm blew out of socket, couldn't use my arm anymore. My career came to an end friend of mine invited me to church and, and the day that I went to church uh, that preacher that day spoke on sickness and healing and how sometimes God will use something painful to give you a little wake-up call the life you're leading is not what he had intended and so that's kind of this yeah. major turn for me of of the world and then and following Christ an absolute amazing story and 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 God will always find his people and and God's people are in all kind of places they're in all kind of situations uh but they're his people and he will find them and that's why we have to always be open to sharing the gospel with whoever we can share the gospel with because we don't we don't know who they are that's right uh, but we, our job is to make sure that we get that word out. And it's for that purpose, James, because yeah. God's people are they're strewn about all over the place. And and they come to a point where and there are many points that they come to. But yours was, hey, there's got to be more to life than this. That question is asked so often by people, uh, in particular in Hollywood right now, you know, That's making right. a lot of money and, and, and doing all these different things. I could probably name some. Right, right off the top of my head, I won't. But they know there's more to life than what it is. You know That's that right. that partying dude and having fun and spending money and enjoying largesse only goes so far. That's right. That's right. It it really only goes so far. The true treasures are within. Absolutely. And and back to your original thing about Hong Kong with Fortress Hill, and that's part of the reason we call our team Fortress Hill is because my grandmother lived on Fortress Hill. Is amazing lady. Uh, she was very well known. She was very wealthy. She hit it in the Hong Kong real estate boom. Uh, she was actually voted mother of the year. I mean, think of all the moms in Hong Kong, right? My, my grandmother was voted mother of the year. Now, the wow. reason I say all this great stuff, if you will, from an earthly standpoint, yeah, and, and it's a really great reminder for myself, my family, and for others. It's like we can gain the whole world but lose our soul because of this is one important point. My grandmother did not know Christ. And okay. so it's always been a marker for our family, like, hey, we can gain the whole world. We can have all these accolades, but we can miss it if we don't know the king. Absolutely, we can. 
And I, I want to let every, everyone know that we're, we're talking with James Sang Lee, stuntman who's been in Hollywood for years, also a world champion fighter. And he will be speaking at this year's International Christian Film Festival in Orlando, Florida, to be held May 3rd through the 6th. It's a wonderful, it's kind of like the Christian version of the Oscars, quite, quite frankly and honestly. And it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And that's founded by Marty Jean Louis, who will be on the show at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, tell us how long you've been associated with ICFF. Uh, you James. know, I, I go way back. I, I want to say seven to ten years almost at this point. I recall knowing Marty uh, through Courtney Shaw, our, our mutual friend, for years. So okay. I would say seven to ten years. I remember the, some of the early days of ICFF. F. So tell us a little bit about what you're going to be discussing and talking about this year at ICFF. Yeah, well, this year we're going to focus on fight choreography, but specifically knife fighting in fight choreography this year. Okay. Uh, over the years, I've talked about um, fighting itself, punches and kicks and camera work and choreography. Uh, last year, I think I was focusing on safety with firearms on set, especially after the rust situation with uh, Alec Baldwin. And then, of course, you yeah. know, I was on the plane uh, movie with Gerard as a... Um, the sniper in the movie. So we're going to switch gears a little bit uh, and teach knife fighting. And one of the reasons is we want to, on our team, always raise the tide so all ships rise. And the, our, our thought process for us is, hey, how do we help Christian filmmakers have exposure, have resources that they might not normally have, but you know, people like myself in action design can help out with? It, it's interesting you mentioned Alec Baldwin and, and the situation that he's in right now. And I, I love Alec Baldwin. And I, and I, and I really feel sorry, uh, sad for him that he's in the midst of the situation. There's a lot of legal stuff going on. I don't know the particulars about it. You would know way more about that stuff than I. But I know I really like Alec Baldwin. My heart tells me that it was just a, just a mistake. It was just a mistake. And it just tells you how serious it is and how valuable what you do is to to producing a film like that. Well, just to give you an idea, when um, in Alec Baldwin's situation, we're talking more of a, a cowboy six shooter type gun. So these are like more like single shot type guns. Yeah. When we were on plane, um, Jean Francois Richet brought four specialists in: two Navy SEALs, an Army Recon guy, and myself. And Francois was uh, Richet was like, "Hey, I want to bring in people who know how to do this. We want want to spend time." teaching somebody doing this we want people who know how to do it now uh, in our case we were using full automatic military spec weapons and then i had the barrett 50 caliber sniper rifle you're talking about a gun that can shoot a mile away wow and so when you're using gear like this you really do need to know what you're doing what's interesting about rust is every sort of protocol appears to have been broken and the reason i use plane in comparison to that yeah. How a firearm moves on set is usually from law enforcement to the armorer, armorer to the first AD, and the first AD to the director, and then all cast in the scene would know the gun. Yeah. Um, at some point, all of those protocols must have been broken because it is a uh, probably since 93, 94, Brandon Lee and the Crow. I don't yeah. recall yeah. something has happened since. You know, and, and, and when you say AD, you're saying accidental discharge. No, I was thinking uh, first assistant director. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Which, in this case, that's exactly what happened, an accidental discharge. Absolutely. With, with uh, Alec Baldwin. And and the thing just, again, I, I just thought it was interesting you did mention that because that's what you do. And that's, again, it's so valuable to have people on the set that know what they're doing, not to say that they didn't on Rust. I don't know the particulars about it. Just the value of having people there that know what they're doing because things can go, can go South yep. and it could cost someone's life. And in this case it did. And going all the way back to Brandon Lee of the crow, it also happened there. Um, I want to get back to the ICFF. How did you and Marty Jean Louis meet? Yeah. Marty Jean and I met from our mutual friend, Courtney Shaw. Courtney and I were in the same Bible study together. Uh, we were in young adult ministry and, um, uh, Courtney was aware that I was working on martial arts for the autism community at that time. And okay. so Marty was filming with Courtney and they asked to interview me on one of their shows. 
And Courtney Shaw is the actor that can be seen on Law and Order. Is that correct? Uh, Courtney's known for uh, Don't Say My Name. Uh, she's an actress in Don't Say My Name, um, the human ah, trafficking okay. film. And okay. uh, if I remember, Courtney was Miss Florida and uh, many other awesome things, but amazing lady. Okay, I, 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 I'm getting her confused with another Courtney Shaw. I, I, and I might, I might not even have the name correct. I thought I'd take a stab at it. Anyway, that <laughs> being said, James, I, I, I want to ask you something about the Christian film genre. Uh, what, what is your opinion of the state of Christian filmmaking today? Great question. Um, you know, my wife always encourages me to be kind. And so I'm going to be kind, but I'm also going to be very uh, truthful on this. I think the um, Christian filmmaking is really on the rise. I think we have momentum. I really like seeing uh, the projects I've chosen right now. I really feel like the gospel is delivered very clean, uh, very uh, smooth. And I think production quality and value is so high. I think my yeah. challenge, though, to the Christian filmmaking circle is that I see too much genre that is still in a documentary, uh, inspirational family type films. Uh, and again, and you've heard me say this, Maurice, before, I think we need to push the bar and push the thematics all the way from action, maybe even uh, you know, increasing some of these like uh, vindications out. I would like to see more shows like this to engage in culture with Christian filmmaking. Man, tell me all about it, dude. I'm glad you mentioned Vin uh, Vindication, which is a, um, a directed by Jared O'Flaherty, which can be seen on Pure Flix and Redeem TV. That is a Christian crime drama. Right. And that's not something you see very typically in Christian filmmaking. And to exactly. your point, love to see more uh, subject matter addressed like that. Um, uh, Michael Patterson says that uh, hey, your character's uh, sniper rifle, he nicknamed Mother from 1989, Navy <laughs> oh, oh, Michael, that's awesome. Uh, for those of you listening right now, in the movie Plane, I used the Barrett 50 caliber sniper rifle. It's about four and a half feet long. It's yeah. about, about 50 pounds loaded. And just yeah. to give everybody out there a little thing on the word Mother, this gun before Lionsgate picked me to be honest, they said, James, are you in shape? And I was like, yeah, I'm in shape. I, you know, work out all the time. I fight with the guys. And they're like, no, are you really in shape? They want you to run with this gun the entire movie. So be ready. And I was like, okay, I got you. 50 pounds though. Oh, well, well, uh, Jody uh, Clark of Salt and Crown, her husband, James uh, and, and Jody run Salt and Crown. They have a podcast that they're working on. Uh, but anyway, they, they start a Canadian a Christian film company to do just that. Hopefully you'll be up to traveling this way and help us be our best. That, you, you want James, Jody. You That's definitely awesome. want James. Believe me, you want James. J Jody, I look forward to coming to Canada. My family lives in Toronto. I look forward to doing something with you guys someday. Man, I, I that, that would be awesome. I, again, and, and Jody and her husband, James, of Salt and Crown, they are starting – a film company they're they're working on getting that done and they want to do some some maverick things in the christian film industry and i i tell you dude you would be you would just be awesome dude to to assist in helping you know christian filmmakers get this done so jody says i'm an hour away we'll see you soon <laughs> <laughs> awesome i look forward to it uh, hey caitlin how's it going everything is going great hey caitlin uh, Talking with uh, James Sang Lee, who's a stunt man, who's done some great films with Lethal Weapon 4, Blade, and Plane, which was released, I believe, January 13th in the theaters, will soon to be released on the streaming platform. You definitely want to see that film. That's with Gerard Butler. What was it like working with Gerard? Gerard was awesome. Uh, he's actually kind of funny. Um, an <laughs> incredible worker. I mean, he really works on his craft. I love him as a uh, an uh, actor and a performer of course i love the olympus uh, and the fallen series uh, but i was really impressed because he was also wearing the producer hat on this last film and even with all that busyness going on you know he still had time to hang out with everybody and and a really great guy he's been doing you know gerard butler has been one of those superhero guys that's Probably one tick under the, the the radar as being like the guy guy. But he's done a lot of great action films and a, a great fighter. That's tough, dude. He's a really tough dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, but he's a good-sized guy, and he can move. 
How, how tall is he, James? Uh, let's see. He's probably, I'm going to guess, 6'2 plus. Yeah, I would, maybe even 6'3. Uh, good size guy, good health. Yeah, great to work with. We were talking about last year at, at the uh, Christian Film Festival in Orlando about budgeting for Christian films. We, we kind of touched on that a little bit as well. Do, do you see a great improvement coming to the budgets for Christian films in the near future? You know, I think when people ask me that question, I really think the answer is, is the story good? Um, I've shared this many times in some of the interviews, especially because I'm from action design. Uh, we can make anything in action look cool, right? You can, you can bang up a car, you can beat up people, you can have guns and knives. Um, but I use Transformers 2 as an example. You're talking big box office, Michael Bay. But yeah. when the storyline is not there, it doesn't matter how good action is. So I really encourage people like, you know, the writers out there, let's make some good action films and scripts, but it comes from good storytelling still. So we can't, you know, uh, ignore that. Give us a little bit of a background on, on Plane with Gerard Butler. Yeah. So Plane, uh, Lionsgate action thriller Plane, was uh, Gerard in a different role. Uh, Gerard was a commercial airline pilot. And so he wasn't the action guy we would see like in Olympus Fallen and London Has Fallen. Um, but he's still the hero, of course. And so we see him as a commercial airliner uh, uh, pilot and they get into a storm and they have to crash land around New Year's Eve, I think it was, with a group of uh, travelers. And okay. the story goes on. They land in a hostile territory and the story ensues that Gerard cares for his people and tries to bring them to safety. And then later on in the film, myself and three other Green Berets come in as the rescue team uh, to bring support for rescue. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that on, and I think it's still in a few theaters, but it's soon to be released on the streaming platform. We were talking about a little bit about uh, how the films now are dominating on the streaming platform versus the theater. Yeah. And it, it, you know, COVID knocked, the theater completely. I mean, it, talk about fighting. You know, part, it, this is a great point. It knocked the theater on its back. Yeah. I mean, they, they hit the canvas. And now that people are starting to slowly come back as COVID is slowly going away, people are starting to trickle back in. But right now, it's all about the streaming platform. I'd love to, to get your opinion on this. I mean, do you what, what do you think the future looks like in about a year, theater versus streaming? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. I think what we see is that people still have desire to go to films uh, in the theater, but I think they're going to be a little more pickier and choosier which ones. For example, um, Top Gun, right? Top Gun, Tom Cruise and the guys made Top Gun. They yeah. held off on releasing it. They were in that, like, are we streaming this? Are we doing yeah. this? So they waited. Now they hit it big because it was the right kind of film to watch on the big you know, if you will, 40 foot screen up in the air. I yeah. think there are certain genres of film that really that that movie experience, if you will, uh, requires a theater. But I think back to your streaming part, there are going to be some parts that are honestly probably better in the comfort of your home. Yeah, I, I, I saw uh, Top Gun last year. That was the only film. Well, actually, it was the second one. I, I went out twice just because I want to go out. But I saw that in the theater and I thought, it, it was pretty awesome. Top Gun with uh, Maverick with uh, Tom Cruise was legit, legit to me. I thought it was really good. Real good. Um, but but that being said, what 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 other projects do you have coming up on the horizon, James? Uh, coming up, I've got uh, the Kahana stunt uh, documentary. It'll come out in a couple weeks. This is with legendary stunt coordinator Kim Kahana Sr., 93 or 94 years old. This is a uh, stunt double for Charles Bronson on the 1970s okay. for you action crazy guys out there like me. <laughs> um, but that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, and then I've got a couple of live events coming up too with the Terracotta Challenge and Fighting Line Championship with mixed martial arts and stuff for youth. So a lot of martial art events coming up as well. I love it. I love it. Absolutely awesome. What message can you leave with young people out there, particularly young faith-based entertainers out there, James, that are thinking about making a career of this. It's a very difficult genre, acting, entertainment. It's not as uh, glamorous and as, as uh, 
uh, I don't know. I, I, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be a director. I'm going to, and they think it's going to be a great deal. It's going to be exciting and fun. And it is all those things, but you know, it's, it's not a one, two, three kind of deal. Uh, what message can you leave with them? Yeah. Great question. I appreciate the question too, Maurice. I would say this is whatever the skill set you're in director, lighting, sound, actor, actress, stunt person, be the best that you can be, be the best and be ready. And the reason I say that is I think as Christians, we should be literally bringing the best that we have. And then some, because we talk about being in the creative business, we are sons and daughters of the most high. That is the greatest creator. So we should be ready. We should be practicing and we should be the best that we can be in our particular fields. That would be number one. Number two is I would say, especially in faith-based projects, is be willing to lend an, uh, a hand wherever that may be. If I'm not an electric, if I got to carry cables, hey, I'm going to carry cables. If you yeah, want me to hold yeah. your camera, I'll hold your camera. You need me to help at craft service, I'm going to help yeah. you at craft service. And the reason is, remember, if we raise the tide, all the ships will rise. So make sure everybody pitch in together. And, and, and I like what you said about that, taking those menial jobs, which are not glamorous, like carrying the cables or being an insignificant extra in a crowd scene or what have you. you know, all those things are hugely important and stack them up. It's a great way to network. People are going to remember your face. They're going to remember how willing you are to be a part of the, the whole thing, you know, I, I remember uh, when I was a kid, I went out and, you know, my, I, the, the coach uh, asked for a volunteer to play center on a, 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 on the football team. Who wants to play center? And I said, I'll do it. You know, I just wanted to play and ended up being, you know, the starting linebacker just because I just said, I'll do whatever you want me to do, coach. It makes a big difference. I want to go back to something that, that uh, we discussed earlier and, well, actually, I mentioned it, but I want to go back to the film Blade. When, when you did Blade, and this was probably, correct me if I'm wrong, the first uh, superhero film regarding a comic book, whether it be Marvel or DC. Could be wrong. No, well, I can go back to Superman. That was probably the number one. Superman opened the door for everything. <laughs> no question. But did you, <laughs> did you see Marvel exploding like this when you did Blade? Wow. Great question. Well, first I would say this, you know, in that timeline for me, I would say that's a 96, 97, 98, 99 kind of timeline. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I started to really hit some big ones. Uh, Mick Rogers was stunt coordinator for lethal weapon. So, I mean, I was just honored that he would hire me. Conrad Palmozano hired me back then uh, in blade. Uh, Jeff Ward was stunt coordinator. Then I think if I remember Chuck Jeffries was fight coordinator, uh, fight choreographer back then. Yeah. And so, I really looked at that timeline like, wow, I really hit some big films. You know, Lethal Weapon is a franchise. And then back to your original question with Blade, I think we all kind of knew when we were on Blade, you know, this is Marvel number one, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think yeah. we, we kind of knew that it was going to be good. Um, Wesley, uh, he did not hold back on the talent, especially in fight scenes. Yep. Uh, Jeff Ward and him had a chemistry. Chuck Jeffries, you know, he had done all those Hong Kong films. I think yeah. we kind of knew we had hit a very special season that we were all together uh, to make such a cool product. And uh, so I, I, I don't know if we thought it would be as big as the whole Marvel Universe, but I definitely would say that we knew we had a, a winner. And and you did. You guys kicked it off. No one really kind of knew. And then all of a sudden, I, I mean, one I think Iron Man actually is what propelled it into the stratosphere and never looked back. But Blade was the beginning. A lot of people don't know that Blade really kicked off the Marvel Universe, quite right. frankly and honestly. And daggone it, I think Wesley Snipes killed it. I mean, the, 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 did you personally teach him the choreography in that film? No, no. In fact, uh, Wesley is very impressive martial artist. Um, okay. okay. Jeff Ward and I had worked on uh, Dead Presidents, I think, together before I had been brought in to do fight scenes with Wesley. Um, but Wesley, amazing martial artist. And as I mentioned, Chuck Jeffries, incredible choreographer. I was going to say real quick, too, that Iron Man 2, uh, the Fortress Hill team, the next generation, 
Adam yep. Lytle ended up on Iron Man 2. So that's kind of a cool thing that you brought that up because like you said, like where are young people, where are next gen faith-based filmmakers? Hey, do whatever you have to do. I remember Adam, he's like, he was willing to do whatever it took to get on these projects. So lend a hand. Lend a hand, bottom line. There you go, James. <laughs> Lend a hand, man. Don't be afraid to, to just do whatever needs to, to be done to get your, your face out there and meet someone. People will remember that you will do whatever it takes to be successful. People remember that stuff. So oh, yeah. great advice. Great advice, James. Uh, how can fans follow you on social media or by website? Oh, great. I appreciate that. Uh, you can follow me at uh, Instagram, James Sang Lee. Also, my website, www.jamesanglee.com. Uh, check it out. Would love to hear from you guys in social media world. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with stuntman fight choreographer James Sang Lee on the Maurice Brown Show. He will be at the International Christian Film Festival this May, May 3rd through the 6th in Orlando, Florida, and uh, find out if you can still get tickets for that. I think you can. Just go to uh, the website there and and check it out. I believe it's uh, the internationalchristianfilmfestival.org. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Just type it on Google. You'll find it and, uh, and find out if you can get a ticket for that. That's going to be an uh, – and then later on, the founder of the International Christian Film Festival, Marty Jean-Louis, will be right here at – 5 p.m. Eastern today, and we're going to talk about some of the upcoming events that are going to be going on there. If you've enjoyed uh, our conversation today, well, uh, like it and share it, by gosh. And subscribe <laughs> to the Maurice Brown Comedy Channel, as well as any social media engine that Mr. James Sang Lee is a part of. And if you missed the conversation you're coming in at the tail end of this interview. You can always watch the replay on Facebook or YouTube, or you can watch the entire replay on the creative motion network on Roku TV. Also, you can see this or hear it on Spotify, uh, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Amazon music, and audible where all major podcasts are heard. You can also catch us there. This has been a great conversation. Cannot wait. Uh, dude, how about what are we like about what now? I don't know, man. Five or six weeks away. Yeah, we're uh, we're close. I can't wait to see you, man. Yeah, man. My gosh, time really flies. And I, I'm I'm excited. It's, it's always a great time at the uh, Christian Film Festival. There's so many great people there from the Christian acting world. And I, I'm telling you, I really think this, well, for, I don't even think it is the best festival regarding christian filmmaking in the world mm -hmm. and 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 marty jean has done a great job uh you know what a visionary yes. what a visionary and this is so greatly needed in the christian world you know because we've got a lot of great stuff out there people need to be aware of it and they need to be recognized and awarded for their great accomplishments so that's going to be again may 3rd through the 6th uh and uh in orlando florida so uh folks Find out if you can get a ticket for that because it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, James Sangley on the Maurice Brown Show. Once again, thank you so much, James. I look forward to seeing you down there in Orlando. In the meantime, you take care. Be safe. And may the peace of Christ be with you and your family, sir. Thanks, Maurice. God bless you, man. Thanks for having me. Uh -huh.